When I saw the initial renders and specifications of this new Phoebus diver, it looked really attractive and it ticked pretty much all the boxes. However, as it happened with my previous Phoebus watch, no matter how good were the product pictures, there were still surprises when I've got to see the real deal. So I now have this new Argo model with me here and we can examine it in all the details. So let's roll that intro. Hello and welcome back! This is a new model from Phoebus and we have a bunch of interesting things to unpack here, starting from the design and if you are familiar with Phoebus, they manage to come up with cool and original designs all the time. And I really like what they did on this model, but design is not the only area where Phoebus pushes the envelope, we get some very well implemented functional features here too. And I am talking about the bezel, bracelet and yes, looks like we have a new clasp here, well, at least new to me, which I really like. Like, but more about this later. And of course, we will take a look at the loom performance too. But in my usual style, if there is anything that I can think of that could have been done better on this diver, rest assured, I will share it with you at the end of this video. Now, a quick disclaimer, Phoebus obviously very much impressed with my previous review of one of their divers, send me this one for review too and I don't have to send it back, hence a pop-up at the start of this video. And of course, all the links to the product listings and details of any promotional coupons or codes will be in the description of this video too, so do check them out if you are after a sharp deal. Ok, in terms of the design, looking at the case and we are met with sharp and elegant angled facets and straight lines. Unmistakingly designed as a tool watch to challenge the oceans, this model is named Argo, after the most formidable watercraft of Greek mythology, bringing together adventure and craftsmanship. And I think Phoebus did achieve that adventure kind of look and feel of something you would take on the quest. And as any tool, it could mean different things to different collectors. For me, it actually looks like something that could have come out from a Japanese samurai sword blacksmith workshop. And this theme is observed throughout the details of this timepiece. The case, the bracelet, the crown grip and even the top of the bezel where we get this 12-sided polygon. So I think Phoebus deserves high marks for design here. In terms of dimensions, we have 40mm bezel diameter, the case height is 13.5mm and lug to lug distance is 47.7mm. We have 20mm lug width, well proportioned to the 40mm diameter and the bracelet has a nice taper down to 18mm by the clasp. Talking about the bracelet, Phoebus supplied plenty of extra links here, so at the full length the bracelet will easily cover circumferences up to 8 and 3 quarters of an inch or about 22 and a half centimeters. I had to remove almost 2 inches worth of links to fit my about 7 inch wrist and as you can see this watch weighs 177 grams as is and 157 grams after adjusting it to my wrist, which is a very good weight for a stainless steel diver. And it looks like Phoebus decided to play it safe and went with tried and tested Sega NH35 movement here. Great Japanese movement, very popular among macro brands and of course helps to keep the price down too. Looking at the case, as I mentioned earlier, it does look like something forged in one of those katana samurai sword studios in Japan. The lines are elegant and the transitions are crisp and well defined. The finishing is pretty much brushing all around and Phoebus designers playing with different brushing types and direction to further accentuate the transitions between the case facets. Also, the case looks nice and slim despite its 13.5mm height and this is achieved by clever sculpting of the case which draws our attention to the slim flank and gives the impression of a slender profile. The right side of the case protrudes for a few millimeters and as such creates a crown guard protection for the screw down crown. The crown also has an interesting design with slightly narrowed neck and a square gear like shaped grip. The crown is also has embossed a Phoebus logo and is comfortable to engage and operate. And flipping the watch around we can see a much larger version of the same logo embossed on the screw on the case. And to finish the overview of the case, we have 200 meters of declared water resistance, very practical and should be suited for swimming and skin diving. We have ever so slightly curved double dome sapphire crystal here. The crystal is surrounded by this dodecagon frame or basically a 12-sided polygon made out of brushed stainless steel, which is one of the signature design elements of this diver. 
and according to FIBA specifications, they applied three layers of anti-reflective undercoating. And as I take this watch out in the wild under the occasional British sun, we can see that the crystal deals with reflections quite well, which is also helped with high-polished multifaceted hands and our indices on the dial. The crystal is of course surrounded by the ceramic bezel insert. Because some space is already taken by the metal ring, the bezel looks a bit thinner and somewhat more elegant, with a vintage vibe. The bezel markings are well loomed, as we will see in the moment, and the bezel grip has very similar shape to the grip on the crown, keeping the design consistent. The grip is very comfortable and the resistance is just right. Actually, the bezel action on this watch is really good and somewhat different to most bezels of experience. The tolerances are very tight, there is no back play or side play for that matter, the alignment is spot on and the action is very tactile and definitive. It is like using some kind of high quality precision instrument, which, well, in theory, this watch is kind of supposed to be. So, in short, the bezel action here is definitely above the price point of this watch. And here is how this bezel sounds. This is my second Phoebus and I was impressed by the dial on the first one and I'm even more impressed by the dial on this watch. Phoebus offers this diver in five different colorways and I've got this red option. Actually, it looks a bit more like a burgundy red, a deep rich color with nice gradient applied on the sunray textured dial. I really like it. This one is definitely looks better in person than it comes across on the product pictures. We get printed minute chapter ring and applied hour markers, which according to FIBA specifications are filled with no less than 15 layers of BGW Super Luminova Loom and so are the prominent pencil style hands. And as I mentioned earlier, the metal frames of our indices, as well as multifaceted hands, as well as framing of the date window, all are finished in high mirror polish style and create a lovely light play and really make this dial pop. The Phoebus logo and wording above the 6 o'clock marker are all printed in a silvery color, adding to the premium look of this dial. And of course, the loom. 15 layers of BGW9 Superluminova speak for themselves here. The loom application is consistent, it glows nice and bright, and as I speed up the test, there is very little degradation after a 15-minute period, so we are well covered in the loom department here. Now, the creative design of this timepiece continues with the bracelet. The same as the case, the bracelet is constructed from 316 L stainless steel. We get solid inverted end links here, as well as solid links. The links are connected by screws, a hallmark of more premium bracelets. I really like the end links and the case integration, it is almost seamless and makes the bracelet look like a continuation of the case. The bracelet is almost fully brushed, apart from the thin strips on the sides of the links. Actually, those strips do make it look like a five-piece link bracelet, however, looking on the inside, we can clearly see that we have three-part links. And now moving to the clasp, again, very hard to fold. We have a fully milled double pusher clasp, the clasp is signed with Phoebus logo, so we get a good consistency of branding throughout this watch, and the clasp also has a very useful on-the-fly adjustment mechanism. The mechanism is robust, it provides about 7 to 8 mm of adjustable length and pretty much guarantees a comfortable fit every time. And of course, we need to look at the price of this new diver. And the good news is that it is very much in line with Phoebus' other offerings. And even better news is that during the introduction period, which runs until the 5th or 6th of June, do check the details on Phoebus' site. So during this period, we can use an early bird $69 discount code provided in the description. It will bring the price down from $345 US dollars all the way to $276. Ok, so what's my verdict? Well, I did promise a full scrutiny of this timepiece and I will deliver before I share with you my verdict. So, in a week and a half of wearing and testing this watch, the only thing that I did notice, which I believe could have been done possibly better, and I might be splitting hairs here, so I did notice that tolerances on the bracelet are not as tight. On the flip side, it does help with better articulation and flexibility, so maybe it is not a shortcoming after all. But otherwise, it is 
a brilliant diver with quite a unique and interesting design, very well built with all the top materials and featuring excellent bezel action, very useful on the fly adjustment clasp and tons of loom as we would expect from a serious adventure timepiece as this Argo. So yes, do check them out, the links will be in the description. What are your thoughts? Do let us know in the comments. And of course, for all the other divers and tactical watchers, do check out my video on the screen over here. And if you found this review helpful, do hit that like button and of course don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And as always, thank you for watching, take care and I will see you in the next video.